Okay. Well, let's take a look at the next parable. The next parable is the parable of the weeds, verse 24. It says, Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a man, uh, yeah, the kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while everyone was sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. When the wheat sprouted and formed heads, then the weeds also appeared. The owner's servants came to him and said, Sir, didn't you sow good seed in your field? Where then did the weeds come from? An enemy did this, he replied. The servants asked him, Do you want us to go and pull them up? No, he answered, because while you are pulling the weeds, you may uproot the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. At that time I will tell the harvesters, First collect the weeds and tie them in bundles to be burned, then gather the wheat and bring it into my barn. So uh, this is one of what is known as the kingdom parables. Uh, and kingdom parables have this phrase in them, the kingdom of heaven is like. All right? And the kingdom of heaven, what, what is meant by the kingdom of heaven? Well, the kingdom of heaven will extend beyond the church, but for right now, the kingdom is synonymous with the church. Okay? So we're, we're, we're in the kingdom. We're part of the kingdom. So these are stories to help us understand what it is to be the church, living in this world as the church. Sometimes this is referred to, this parable is referred to as the wheat and the tares. Have you ever heard that? The wheat and the tares. Okay. Also known as Darnell. Uh, Darnell is called the false wheat in some places. And that's because tares or Darnell look almost identical to wheat. And Darnell can be infected by an endophytic fungus. I don't even know what endophytic means, but as I was researching, I came up with that. Um, and this fungus that comes on this weed is used today to, use, to make insecticides. And so if anybody would eat this Darnell that has this fungus, it would cause like a drunken nausea. Okay? So you'd kind of be swaying and not sure where you were and sick to your stomach. Um, and it can also be fatal then. So <laughs> this, was not a, this was not a junior high prank, okay, to, to plant these tares in with the wheat. This could have cost people lives. Uh, Jesus is, is describing here something that the people would know about. In ancient times, feuding families or enemies would wait until their subject's ground was plowed, and then they would sow Darnell into their field to cause a destructive infestation. It would contaminate the good wheat when harvested, making the whole field a total loss. And separating the Darnell or the drunk weed from the wheat at harvest was difficult, if not impossible, because they looked so similar. Uprooting the darnel or the tares during the growth cycle was almost impossible because the, ro the roots intertwined with the good wheat. So if you tried to pick out these weeds, you'd end up pulling the wheat with it. So the hearers of this parable would, <coughs> excuse me, would know all too well the challenges of dealing with this type of agricultural sabotage. And so severe was this crime that the Roman Empire outlawed planting poisonous plants in another person's field. Okay, so this wasn't, Jesus isn't just making up some wild-eyed story here, but apparently there's a, enough of this going around that Rome said, we got to put a stop to this. And they made a law to stop it. But Jesus says here that one of the field hands sees what has happened and goes to the owner and asks if he wants the servants to carefully go through the fields and pull up the weeds. But the owner says no, because, as mentioned just a moment ago, the roots were intertwined, and so to pull up the weeds would pull up the wheat. And instead, he says, we're going to wait till the harvest. And when the harvest time comes, then we'll try and separate the wheat from the weeds. Now, let's deal with this parable in full before we look at some of the other parables. So jump down, because Jesus explains this parable in verses 36 through 43. Then we'll come back to verse 31. So verse 36. Then he left the crowd and went into the house. His disciples came to him and said, Explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. He answered, The one who sowed the good seed is the son of man. The field, excuse me, the field is the world, 
and the good seed stands for the people of the kingdom. The weeds are the people of the evil one, and the enemy who sows them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the harvesters are angels. As the weeds are pulled up and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send out his angels, and they will weed out of his kingdom everything that causes sin and all who do evil. They will throw them into the blazing furnace, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. Whoever has ears, let them hear. Okay, so it says here that Jesus is back in the house with his disciples, and they ask him to explain the meaning of this parable. And Jesus says that the one who sows the good seed, the wheat, he says that's the son of man. Now that's a messianic title. So Jesus is saying, Jesus sows the good seed. The field is the world. So Jesus came to announce to the world the way into the kingdom. And those who respond, those who believe, Jesus' followers, they are the wheat. But the tares, the weeds, are planted by Satan. And they are the people of the evil one. Now what's the harvest? The end of the world, when Jesus comes again. Okay, that's the harvest. And the harvesters are the angels. Matthew chapter 24, verse 31 says that Jesus will send his angels to gather his elect from around the world. And when Jesus comes again, the weeds will be pulled out and thrown into the fire, getting everything that causes sin and all who do evil to be out of the world. And then the righteous will be absolutely unmistakable, he says. Now, I have heard, I'm sure you probably have heard, some say it, that this is describing the church. What's being talked about here is the church. That in the church, you have some people who are true believers, and then you have some people who are not true believers in the visible church. And certainly that's true. Certainly that's true. But Jesus doesn't say here that the field is the church. Jesus says here that the field is the world. Now, the church is part of that, okay? But the field is the world. So what is Jesus saying in this parable? Yeah, until Jesus comes again... Light and darkness live side by side, right? Um, any of you ever have any problems with your neighbors? <laughs> yeah. The only time my neighbors frustrate me is, uh, well, around here they, they set off fireworks a lot more than they do up north. But, yeah, Fourth of July, you know, Aunt Edna's birthday, whatever it is, they're se always sending off these fireworks. And people who send off fireworks have just, they don't take into consideration that the guy who lives next to him might be a preacher and have to get up super early on Sunday morning, right? So, yeah. But yeah, so we live side by side. We live side by side. Um, God's going to allow sin and wickedness to continue until Jesus comes again. It's the way it is. Um, Another one I wrote down here is, our responsibility is not to avoid the weeds, but to bear fruit. And then another lesson, there will be a day of judgment. There will be a day of judgment. 